hola and welcome I guess to me telling you all the books that I don't want to read that are popular and have big fan bases. Some tea is going to be spilled inside me because I don't want to waste it. <laughs> I mean this is the cheapest peppermint tea that the shop does because I mean inflation is evil. I don't want this intro to be like 10 miles long so let's just get into this list of books that I don't want to read. An alternate title for this video would be Convince Me to Read These Books because I may or may not do a follow-up video where I actually read some of these just to see whether I was right to put them on my list of books that I never want to read or whether it's actually worth it to read them. I recommend that you get yourself a beverage to make up for the amount of tea that's going to get spilled in this video. So first let's start with Sarah Janet. She's a very very popular fantasy author. She writes both young adult and adult. Let's talk about Throne of Glass first. So this one is I think her name's like Selena but then she changes her name to Aaron or Aelin or something like that. I think this is like a kind of a, like she's an assassin. It's like an eight book series and already if it's an eight book series and some of these books are like ridiculously long. That just does not appeal to me. I heard it's kind of Sarah J Mass, more like Sarah J Trash. I'm kind of over YA fantasy at this point. I just, I don't find many that I like anymore because they're all just quite predictable and formulaic, which is really sad because when you find a good one, you find a good one. Once you start reading adult fantasy, you can't really look at YA the same way. So the other really popular Sarah J Math series is the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Now I kind of would find it funny doing a reading vlog where I get all these books and read them, but I kind of just want to get them all secondhand. I have dreams of one day going into a charity shop and finding all these books for really cheap because I don't want to spend all my hard-earned money on books that I may not even like. But apparently there's loads of spice in these books. And not the type of spice that's like cumin or ginger. Why did I say cumin? Moving on, the next book is The Selection by Kira Cass. Now, I saw the French version of this book in foils and I looked at it and the vocabulary is really simple. It's not very descriptive at all, so I could probably kind of read this in French actually. I could, but I don't want to because this is kind of like a bachelor dystopian. Book. I don't really know the plot. I pay no attention when people talk about this book because I heard Bachelor and Love Triangle and my, my brain was like 50 million miles away. The thing that really put this book into I never want to read this scale is the fact that the main character's name is America Singer and she's a singer. Kira, why did you do that? It's as bad as Colleen Hoover's Lily Blossom Bloom. This is a romance book that I think is an age gap. I think she's like 19 and she's doing sussy things with a, like a 50 year old man or something. I don't really have a problem with this fundamentally because I'm like she's a consenting adult if she's 19. It's still a romance book that's got a lot of spice in it and uh, it's just just not for me. I did actually see this book in a charity shop and I kind of thought oh imagine if I got that right but I knew I just would never read it so. This is another series, this is the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. Now I've had a kind of mixed relationship with Cassandra. We've had some hits, we've had some misses. I remember reading the Mortal Instruments series and this series is kind of controversial because there's a kind of is it incest, is it not plotline thing. Why would she set them up to be lovers when they think that they're siblings. That is actually kind of what she did to be honest. I read these books in 2020. Now you think in 2020, which was only three years ago, I would be able to pick up that there were some sussy things going on. To be honest, I read most of these books when I was self-isolating because I was in contact with someone who had Corona and not the beer. I don't think my brain was really working. After I read The Mortal Instruments, I read The Infernal Devices, which is arguably a lot better. It feels a lot more polished and I really enjoyed this series. And then I read Chain of Gold and it was such a letdown. The plot just felt quite stale and it made me think that maybe I should break up with Cassandra because she needs to stop writing in this world. I still want to read Chain of Iron and Chain of Thorns even though I've heard bad things about Chain of Thorns so far. One, I own Chain of Iron and two, I have potential that this series would get better but to be honest I kind of have my doubts. But yeah, 
Cassandra and I, we don't have long left in our relationship. Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now she's probably making headlines again because the Daisy Jones and Six uh, Netflix, that's not a Netflix show. Amazon Prime show has just come out. Um, I read that book and I thought it was just okay. The, the characters were pretty flat because it's told in an interview format so you don't really get to know them that well or at least I didn't think so. But then I read Malibu Rising and I actually really liked that book. I was there for the drama and there was a lot of drama in this book. But this one's about a tennis player and that just puts me to sleep. It's not actually an anaesthetic but it has that desired effect. It makes me doze off because sport and me we do not mix. We're like oil and water. Anyway, it's about this tennis player that comes back to tennis because she's annoyed that somebody beat her record and she wants to beat their record of her record. A lot of, lot of breaking records going on. It sounds so boring. I've also heard that she's like the main character Carrie is like, I think she's Latine. And I've heard that people think that that representation is questionable. Kind of feels like Taylor Jenkins Reid really just kind of put it in there for like diversity points but I can't really comment on that but that's just what I've heard from others. Oh no not I don't want to read from Blood Nash. I've never wanted to read this book even for a joke because it's 600 pages and that's not really a joke anymore. I've heard some reviews call it from Blood and trash. It's about this maiden called Poppy and it's basically just your generic fantasy world and she meets this guy that's like her bodyguard and then they fall in love and there are 50 million books and I'm not interested. The same kind of thing applies to Serpent and Dove, although this is YA. I think this is like a witch and a witch hunter and they're both kind of paired together, which kind of sounds interesting but I know it falls for all the same kind of tired YA tropes. Wait, isn't this the one where she names the black characters after their skin colour? No, I think that's from Blood and Ash. All of these book talk fantasy romances are the same thing in my head, literally. <laughs> Next we have A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Now this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't have a particularly good track record with Beauty and the Beast because it was the first pantomime I ever saw and um, I was really scared by the beast. So, I mean, the experience has obviously scarred me because I do not like Beauty and the Beast retellings. The next one is kind of a more recent book and it's the new Amelie Wen Zhao book that everyone's losing sleep over. I mean, I am losing sleep, but not over that book. I don't even remember its title. It's got some kind of like generic-ish title, but it kind of reminds me of Daughter of the Moon Goddess, I think, because the mythology that's retold in this book is the same, but I don't really know that much about plot. I know there's romance in it, and when I see romance listed as one of the genres on Goodreads, I my attention wavers. Oh no, not, sh not Shat, I mean, really no. You'd have to pay me good money to read this book because I heard it's a bit problematic. I watched a reading vlog of somebody reading it and some of the lines they were reading out I just thought okay that does not feel particularly healthy. It's a kind of generic dystopian YA but all of these dystopian YAs are popular because they came out in like 2010. I think this is still an ongoing series. I think there are like 10 books including novellas at this point because she just keeps writing them. Okay, Red Queen by Victoria Aviard. Now, I believe this is just an amalgamation of like every YA trope rolled into one, and I'm just not interested. And that's, to be honest, is all I have to say about this one. I don't have any funny quips or interesting drama about why I don't want to read it. I just don't want to read it. Next, we have A Little Life. Now, this one does have quite a lot of drama. This one is about this guy called, I think his name's like Jude, and he's always suffering for like various reasons. And I got kind of curious about this book because I saw somebody reading it recently. And um, I looked up the spoilers and oh my gosh, it is gratuitous. And that's just, that's just the summary. And it doesn't help that the author kind of, I believe she advocates against trigger warnings. Even though this book has some of the most gratuitous triggering content in it and she's like I don't advocate for triggering warnings because I think it's spoilers I don't know if she thinks it's spoilers I just like to know what I'm getting into 
Also, there's other things that the author has done that I've just thought is a bit weird. Like, why are you, you doing that? It's uh, famed to be a book that's made like everyone cry. And while I'm interested in finding a book that makes me cry, I do not want to suffer through 700 pages. We're getting towards the end. Anyway, um, next we have Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. What? Kerry Maniscalco? What is this about? I swear most of these books are around the same thing, to be honest. I think this is a kind of book about demons, but it's quite spicy, even though it's YA. I don't remember what this is about. The synopsis bored me to sleep. I was dozing off while I was reading it, and that's probably why I don't remember what it's about. I've heard mixed things about Kerry Maniscalco as an author just in general. Even though the Stalking Jack the Ripper series sounds kind of interesting, I just don't think I would actually like it because I think it's got romance and stuff in it. It's a four book series and I haven't heard that good things about it. It has its audience, but I don't think it's necessarily gonna be something that I would give a sounding ovation to. Honestly, I actually hurt now because I've been sitting in a weird position. I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to torture me, Definitely let me know what I should read. Even if you don't want to read these books yourself, just, just let me know what you want me to read and I'll I'll actually read it. Have a nice weekend, I've got to edit this. And it's Friday. This has got to go up in two days. And my internet is slower than a snail. So this is going to be fun. Goodbye. I literally just turn out the light. I'm so good at this.